Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. Everyone, so 41-year-old West Virginia resident George Tanyos was well-hated prior to the Capitol attack even. And he knew it. He was proud of it, actually. He even referred to himself as the sandwich Nazi. And following his arrest, former employees and customers of his sandwich shop were more than happy to share their stories about him. Employees described Tanyos as a bully. They said that he berated them in public. He yelled at them through a bullhorn. He would fire them on the spot without cause. Um, they also said that he got into physical altercations with customers. He even threatened to mace some of them. And online reviews said that Tanyos pushed Donald Trump propaganda onto his customers. And just as with his apricot antichrist hero, Tanyos allegedly stiffed a business partner to the tune of $435,000. So that business partner gladly confirmed his identity when the FBI showed up at his house. And the former business partner told the Daily Beast, quote, I'm surprised it took this long for him to do something stupid. He's an embarrassment to fellow hardworking, God-fearing, humble citizens of Morgantown and fellow Trump supporters. I can't imagine how many of his former employees and fraternities are enjoying his apparent downfall right now. He was easily the most hated man in Morgantown. And a former employee told them, quote, this has really been a long time coming for him. He's always treated people badly, and he's always acted like he's going to get away with something. He thought he was untouchable. And prior to his trip, Tanyos went to a weapon store. So he asked the sales guy first, can I bring a firearm to D.C.? And he was told no. So then he asked if he could bring a pepper ball gun. And he was told no again because it fires projectiles. Finally, he asked about mace and the salesperson said, yes, you can take it as long as it's aerosol based. So Tanyos purchased two bottles of pepper spray and two bottles of bear spray. And on January 6th, he traveled to D.C. with his co-defendant, Julian Cater. Tanyos carried the pepper spray in his backpack when they entered the restricted area of the Capitol grounds. Um, however, they left the bear spray in their vehicle. After entering the Capitol grounds, Tanyo and Cater briefly split up. And then a while later, Cater comes storming up to Tanyo. He's clearly incensed. And he started searching through Tanyo's backpack. And as he's doing so, he tells him, quote, give me that bear shit. So Tanyo tells Cater, quote, hold on, hold on. Not yet. Not yet. It's still early. And then Cater and Tanyo were seen kind of arguing a little bit. Tanyos appeared to lunge for the bottle of pepper spray in Cater's hand. And then the prosecutor said that it seemed like Cater calmed down a bit. After several minutes, Cater goes back over to the front line of the police. And that's when he sprayed numerous officers at close range. That attack resulted in several officers becoming incapacitated. And it broke the police line, which allowed the mob to ascend the stairs to the Capitol doors. And... Cater's actions and the rest of what took place on January 6th also contributed to the fatal stroke suffered by one of his victims, one of the officers who he sprayed directly in the face. That was Officer Brian Sicknick. That's according to the coroner's report. And while the two men were on the Capitol grounds, Tanyos posted a picture of himself on Facebook. He was standing under a large Trump 2020 flag. So that photo is what led to a former employee contacting the FBI and turning them in. So Tanyos was arrested on March 15th of 2021. He was indicted on charges of conspiracy to injure an officer, assaulting an officer with a dangerous weapon, civil disorder, obstructing an official proceeding, entering restricted grounds, disorderly conduct on restricted grounds, physical violence on restricted grounds, and physical violence on capital grounds. All of the restricted grounds charges, by the way, included a sentencing enhancement for the use of a deadly or dangerous weapon, as well as causing significant bodily injury. In July of 2022, Tanyos pleaded guilty to entering restricted grounds 
and disorderly conduct on restricted grounds. So he was facing up to one year in prison, one year of probation, and $100,000 in fines. However, due to his cooperation with the investigation in Decatur, the prosecutors requested that Tanyos be sentenced to time served because he had already spent five months and six days in jail following his arrest. They also asked the judge to impose one year of probation, 250 hours of community service, and $500 in restitution. U.S. District Judge Thomas Hogan presided over Tanyo's case, and he gave him grief over a Gibson Go account that he set up because the donation page says that Tanyos was wrongfully accused. So the judge took exception to that statement, and he told Tanyos, quote, you shouldn't be able to capitalize on the money you raised for the legal defense. Yeah, especially because Mr. Trump supporter here, Mr. Pro-Capitalist, used a public defender. I tell you, these guys are all socialists at heart. He also either doesn't pay attention or he didn't even bother to read his own indictment because he made false statements on that Give, Send, Go page. In updates to his supporters, he claimed that he pleaded guilty to two crimes with which he hadn't been previously charged. Uh, yes. Yes, you were, George. Pull your head out, man. Anyway, Judge Hogan sentenced Tanyos to time served, which was five months, and he ordered Tanyos to complete 100 hours of community service and to relinquish whatever money remains in his Give, Send, Go fundraising account. It looks like Tanyos is still fundraising, too, uh, but he's going to need it, really, because the estate of Officer Brian Sicknick, as I've mentioned to you guys, is suing Tanyos, Cater, and Donald Trump for wrongful death. And Tanyos had to sell his business following his arrest, you know. And of course, he's playing his little poor me violin solo, crying about his wife and his three kids. Oh, I just want to be able to take care of them. You know, should have thought of them on January 6th. As I always say, should have thought of them instead of Donald Trump. Then you'd be free. You could still be terrorizing your employees and your customers, George. Oh, well. Womp, womp, and thoughts and prayers. So anyway, guys, when I hear more, or if I hear more, I will let you know. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Please donate if you possibly can. Leave a tip leave, or uh, become a monthly supporter. Uh, please like this video. Please share this video. Uh, be become a subscriber. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already. It all helps to keep the show going, and I truly appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Take care, and I'll talk with you soon.